So it's your buddy Mike Messier, uh, Mike's instant movie review of a movie that's 40 years old, 40th anniversary of E.T. What are my thoughts? Just saw it here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, AMC Theaters, IMAX. I'm not sure how long this will be playing, if this is a one-night affair, if this is a re-release of a few weeks. Ugh. But if you have a chance, go out and see it. In fact, if you're watching this uh, video in the future, maybe it's the 45th anniversary at this point for E.T. Um, it's just many thoughts I have. First of all, if you've never experienced the wonder of Steven Spielberg's E.T., I highly recommend it. What does E.T. stand for? Extraterrestrial. Uh, interesting. You know what? I wanted to see the names of the cast because watching this movie, I'm trying to think. I mean, the kid, uh, Elliot, did a very, I almost said Daniel, thinking of the Karate Kid. But Elliot, the actor who played Elliot, I think his name was Henry something or other. I don't know if he ever acted again or if he ever had any big parts after this. I think he might have done a few things, but I think by now he's faded into obscurity or maybe just having a nice, normal fucking life. Uh, Drew Barrymore, of course, the little sister, Gertie. Uh, she's in this thing, does a very good job at being a cute little sister. And also, I forgot, uh, her character teaches E.T. how to uh, s uh, speak and spell, so to speak. Texas Instruments. The older brother of Mike, I kind of forgot about him and how important he was this whole uh, thing. Uh, I don't know what happened to the actor who played Mike. Also, one of the bicycle boys, one of Mike's bicycle gang, uh, his poker buddies or whatever they're playing, Castlevania or Dungeons and Dragons, some game that they're playing at the beginning of this thing. Uh, C. Thomas Howell, who later became known for such outstanding roles as... Uh, uh, I believe Pony Boy Curtis and uh, Soul Man. So there you go. See Thomas Howells in this thing as one of the bicycle buddies. Also, for all you perverts out there, Eric Elniak, uh, who was also seen uh, later in life, of course, in uh, Under Siege uh, and in the pages of Playboy and on the Baywatch uh, Bikini Babe or whatever the fuck, One Piece Babe. Erica Elniak is in this movie as a young uh, lady who gets smooched by the drunk frog crazy Elliot in that wonderful sequence uh, when we first kind of see the gravitas of how Elliot and E.T. feel the same thing. Elliot feels E.T.'s feelings. The scientist at the end says to Mike, so Elliot thinks what E.T. is thinking? No. Elliot feels what E.T. is feeling. Oh, my God, damn God. Uh, some other thoughts of this movie. It's not a, not a real criticism, but just an observation. There's a whole lot of smoke in this movie, like just pillows of fucking movie smoke uh, that come out of the spaceship. Uh, later on, um, it's in the house and so forth. I think it's even in the, uh, the storage shed where E.T. emerges uh, to, to, to kind of communicate with Elliot with the fucking baseball. A lot of smoke machines, <laughs> I guess, 1982 or whenever this was made, um, that was like the deal. You know, you, you needed smoke machines to provide science fiction, mystery, and, and wonderment. Uh, what else? Um, I didn't realize that everyone was perving on mom the whole fucking movie. I think her name is Mary. Sometimes the kids call her Mary, but the, the mom character, uh, the recent, uh, I guess she, she just says that they're separated, but <clears throat> her husband's off in Mexico with Stacy, the dentist, uh, or whatever the fuck. And everyone, starting with one of Mike's... Uh, friends, you know, 12 or 14 year old boy friends, whatever they are. One of his friends starts to put, tries to put the ET finger on uh, his buddy's mom's ass, which is not nice. And Mike, you know, shouts him down and a uh, bit of, bit of a, bit of a, bit of a fucking 
uh, sexual harassment from a teenage boy to the to the mom. And then later, E.T. kind of pervs on fucking mom's legs when she's all dressed up for Halloween. E.T.'s kind of perving on mom. And then, of course, the fucking Slapowitz spaceman, who his role is a little clouded to me. The, the guy who claims that he fucking met E.T. when he was 10. Uh, but it's like, is this the exact same E.T.? Is this the exact same guy? that you met when you were 10. He just happens to keep coming back. So I, that was a little convoluted for me. I think it's one of those things that Spielberg had to put in something like, oh, not all scientists are evil. Not all adults are bad, blah, blah, fuck. But it, it seemed a little bit convenient. You, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't quite get that. I, and that actor looked familiar and I couldn't think of his fucking name. I was wondering who played the mom. Was she also the mom in Poltergeist, or am I imagining things? Uh, or is that Joe Beth Williams? You know, whenever you see these fucking movies from the early 80s, it's Joe Beth Williams. Of course, Joe Beth. Didn't mean to steal your spotlight, sister. Uh, what else? Just a good fucking movie. I mean, it's it's the, the, the whole shtick you've probably heard. I mean, here's a little critique and criticism. You can find this on YouTube somewhere. That in E.T., there's actually, for all the wonderment and special effects, there's actually a faux pas uh, when the boys on the bikes are at the end and they're flying in the air. Spoiler, sorry. Uh, you can't see the handles on some of their bikes because they didn't translate with the special effects. So there is a little bit of faux pas-iness. I guess you could say it's just the magic of the moment, if you want, that suddenly their fucking bicycle handles disappear. Uh, if this had been a George Lucas joint in the fucking 2000s, he would have fucking drawn them in. But Spielberg has restraint and just lets the movie be itself. I was expecting some after credits Q&A or like an update or a behind the scenes of this wonderful IMAX presentation. They did not do such. Uh, luckily for me, this ticket did work with my AMC Stubbs Pass. Of course, I tell everyone about this stuff, and nobody takes advantage of it. I'm getting a little sick and tired of me referencing things, whether it's my own goddamn books, Fighter Play Basketball, Distance from Avalon, uh, referencing uh, my Mint Mobile. I mean, all the things that I provide, if you look in the goddamn descriptions of this video, all the links, and nobody fucking takes me up on anything that I say. Okay, so I'm getting sick and tired of you people not doing as I tell you. Buy my goddamn books, etc. Uh, so, but with this, the AMC Stubbs Pass, basically you get uh, between 12 and 13 movies a month for about 24 bucks a month, depending on your state, depending on the taxes and so forth. But basically, you get a monthly subscription to the movie theater, you pay your 22 bucks or your 24 bucks, uh, you know, and then you see all the goddamn movies you can pretty much see. I mean, I oftentimes I'll max out the week. I'll see three movies a week. I know a lot of fuckheads out there will say, oh, I don't go to the movies that much. Well, fuck for brain. If you weren't paying so goddamn much every time you went, you probably would go more, asshole. And then people always complain, oh, there's no good movies. No, there's no more good movie fucking viewers. That's the goddamn problem. So any fucking way... This was a wonderful time at the films, a wonderful time at the cinema. I would say there was one group of people, like three young people, another random person, uh, and then me in the back of the theater. So I think that was about five people in this theater here in Fayetteville, uh, one of these cities that you don't really think about too much unless you have to, I guess. But I, I, I have found that Fayetteville, Fayette fuckingville treats me fine. I've had no issues here. I saw Nope on my way up to New England, and now I'm seeing E.T. on the way down. The night is still young. I could go see another film here, but you know what? I'm going to save my film watching for later in the week. I'm going to go rest. I have another big day of driving tomorrow. Uh, what a world. I've been eating too much goddamn sugar for the last two days, too many donuts, uh, caffeine, big coffees every morning trying to fucking drive. The, the traffic's been god-awful and horrendous on my way home. Uh, it's been uh, horrible traffic. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I mean, I, I it used to be my strategy was to drive on the weekends 
seem like the easier time, but not this weekend. Maybe because it's summertime and everybody's jumping around. But there was a fucking, uh, what do you call it, easy pass lanes in Maryland that were not working today. So it's like, okay, assholes, now we have less lanes. I mean, what the fuck? You couldn't even use the goddamn lanes. Uh, so it was just a real dick in the ass as far as the driving. I fucking left. Uh, this pretty sh substandard, I have to say, days in and wherever the fuck I was last night, uh, Elkton, Maryland, okay, not exactly the fun capital of the world, and, uh, I mean, get in there, there's fucking hairs on the towels, it's just weird, I didn't complain, I just couldn't deal with anybody, ordered a goddamn pizza from Papa John's, $25 later, the guy shows up, I put in the goddamn... Uh, Papa John's app and this fuck text me and I say hey um, I'm in the back of the hotel room 122 okay and yet the fuck didn't get my messages until it was too late so he's walking around the parking lot with my pizza getting cold uh, and he brings me no plates he brings me no goddamn garlic uh, and no fucking crushed pepper and no goddamn crushed uh, fucking parmesan cheese so I'm pretty upset but somehow I managed to eat the pizza anyway uh, but just this day and fucking age, it was interesting to see the kids order pizza in this fucking E.T. movie, the, f the first scene, basically, or this, whatever the fuck. Ordering pizza used to be such a fun thing, you always felt like you were on the inside track or whatever the fuck, and now it's just a chore and a hassle, because you have to get the fucking app, you have to get the fucking promo code, uh, you have to tip these assholes. Papa John charges a four ninety nine fucking... Uh, whatever the fuck charge delivery charge and then you're supposed to fucking tip on top of that well who the fuck is getting the 499 assholes the only way to fight that is you have to go online i mean here's a goddamn tip for all you fucks you go online and you put promo codes papa john's august 2022 or insert month here and you can find online relatively simply promo fucking codes okay because people share these things and it worked for me so i saved five dollars and 13 cents which basically wiped out that dick in the ass uh 4.99 service charge plus 14 cents but then i still tipped the fuck 15 percent but i got no garlic i got no fucking parmesan cheese i got no red pepper uh but i did get a fucking pizza that was uh, mildly warm let's put it that way so whatever the fuck well folks that's it uh, so the frog scene, uh, I'm trying to, th I really was impressed by that little fucking bastard Henry or whatever the fuck his name was in this goddamn movie. When I see movies like this and I see these kid actors and I see the C. Thomas Howells of the fucking world, I get a little goddamn pissed off that I wasn't born into some Hollywood fucking family and I could have been a kid actor and a fucking famous one and all that fuck. I mean, I'm a little bit more talented than these assholes, but yet here they are on the big screen forever, and I'm in the goddamn theater watching them. I should be in the fucking theater on the screen. They should be watching me, these fucks. Uh, as far as uh, E.T. goes, he was very good. Uh, Lucas, or whatever the fuck, uh, Lucas Unlimited Magic got a bunch of credits. I guess they helped out. The Lucas Spielberg connection. Oh, one thing I didn't like about E.T., uh, just for, I, it, kind of like a little too many tips of the fucking hat to Star Wars. Like, you basically had two incidents. You had the fucking um, moment where fucking Elliot's playing with the action figures, Ghetto and whatever the fuck. And then you have kind of a famous moment. It's cute, but it's like E.T. and Yoda kind of have like a little stare down at the garden. Andre the Giant Hulk Hogan reference, PWI, by the way. But uh, it's Halloween, and E.T.'s got the sheet on. You know, they've tricked Mom to think it's Gertie, but what did she do for Halloween? And fucking uh, E.T. underneath the hood passes by some kid wearing a Yoda outfit, and they have this kind of Sylvester Stallone, John Travolta, staying alive moment, uh, which is cool, but at the same time, you know, 30 minutes earlier, you had him, fucking Elliot playing with the Star Wars action figures, and it's like, okay... We get it. George Lucas, yay. It's like uh, Spielberg and Lucas have to circle jerk each other uh, at every fucking given moment. I did wonder if uh, Steven Spielberg himself was playing one of the doctors or one of the, the NASA scientists who was fucking around with E.T. at the end. That was kind of a funny moment. I, I laughed out loud. Others did it when the fucking, 
why are the Nassau people wearing like their man on the moon outfits when they fucking come into the house? Like they're wearing their full on, you know, Neil Armstrong fucking Buzz Aldrin outfits when they fucking hop in the house. It was cool for dramatic effect. I get it. But it was a little bit unrealistic. Funny line towards the end when the fucking Elliot's telling the bicycle boys, his brother's friends, he's like, uh, we got to get him to his spaceship. And one of the kids uh, says, uh, why doesn't he just beam himself up? And Elliot says, this is reality, George. Or whatever the fuck. He's, this is reality, George. <laughs> it's funny. So there's some tips of the fucking hat. You know, because it's like, hey, we're in a movie, blah, blah, blah. It's just funny shit. Uh, good times, great oldies. Um, once again, I'm wanting to know who the mother character was. Interesting. Uh, another theme of this film is sibling love. All the, the siblings go on an adventure and how the siblings stick up for each other. I kind of forgot this is really an ensemble. I mean, Elliot gets so much praise in this thing. But little sister Gertie and older brother Mike, they do their parts. Gertie teaches E.T. sort of how to speak, although he really learns it from Sesame Street. But she takes credit for it, which is fine. And Mike and his bicycle gang really save the day towards the end. Uh, so, yes, it's a, it's a team affair. And the, some of these successful kids' movies, I think, like Goonies and uh, whatever the fucks, E.T., they do have this thing of, like, sibling camaraderie which i think was kind of a thing in the 80s and maybe other generations uh if you saw licorice pizza that's a pretty interesting movie uh some uh stuff in there uh Haim, okay the wire etc but for me i enjoyed this fucking film i really did uh, enjoy the fucking presentation as they call it uh on the imax crisp and clean movie looked great uh yes even with those Bicycle hoodwinks, I explained. Uh, but yes, good job, Steven Spielberg. Was he playing one of the doctors? I do not know. Subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. Buy all my books. They're all wonderful. Fighter Play Basketball, Distance from Avalon, MikeMessier.com.